So how does the safe use of hydrocarbons differ to that of handling carbon dioxide? Well, we've asked similar questions to Peter McQueen, a teacher of refrigeration at TAFE, and Kevin Lee, the Global Technical Manager for Heatcraft Worldwide Refrigeration. What equipment I can retrofit? No equipment can be retrofitted. Only equipment that has been designed and manufactured for carbon dioxide can have carbon dioxide installed. With CO2 it cannot be retrofitted because the equipment must be designed for the high pressures of the CO2 itself. How could I identify equipment containing CO2? Carbon dioxide is also known as refrigerant R744. So ideally I would look for identification on the system with some labelling. If there is no labelling on the equipment whatsoever, I would treat the system as though it contained a hydrocarbon refrigerant that is highly flammable. The equipment should be labelled with a label saying carbon dioxide or CO2 or the refrigerant number which is R744. If it's not labelled then you should exercise a lot of caution in establishing what the actual gas is. What are safety procedures required for handling the CO2? Carbon dioxide is classified as a 2RE refrigerant as all other refrigerants that we commonly use are. So all PPE equipment is applicable such as safety glasses must be worn at all times, uh, protective clothing which includes long trousers, long sleeve shirts and safety boots must be worn. It also must be remembered that carbon dioxide is an as asphyxiant which means that uh, it displaces oxygen in the air and can lead to suffocation. So we must work in a very well ventilated area. CO2 poses several uh, major risks for technicians and these can be broken up into three areas. Firstly, um, contact with liquid CO2 can cause cryogenic burns. So you should make sure that you've got all your personal safety equipment there, such as um, clean dry clothing. These should be a long cotton drill shirt, long trousers. Um, you need to have clean, dry, um, waterproof gloves or leather gloves and face and eye protection is critical as well. Secondly, although CO2 is a naturally occurring substance in the air we breathe, it's at very, very low concentrations. And exposure to higher concentrations, for example, 3% can cause hyperventilation. And if it gets up to 10%, you can actually pass out into a coma. And if there's nobody there to rescue you, you'll die. So it's very important that when you're entering an area that potentially has leaked CO2 in it, that you wear a personal protection monitor that'll send up an alarm if there's high concentrations of CO2 present. And thirdly, um, you must only use the service hoses and gauges designed specifically for CO2 because it's much higher pressures than the standard R22 or 404A refrigerants you've used in the past. If you use those gauges and hoses for, for CO2, you run the risk of the hose bursting and causing injury. How do I reclaim CO2 out of the system? CO2 or R744 as we know it is not classified as a controlled substance and therefore can be released directly to the atmosphere. You don't need to actually recover or reclaim CO2 because it's a naturally occurring substance. But you do need to um, exercise a lot of caution when discharging the CO2. Um, it should be done into only a very well ventilated area. And there's another risk that as you discharge the CO2 gas, it can form dry ice in the hose. So you should only discharge it from a valve. You shouldn't have any additional piping or hose attached to the end of the valve where you're discharging the gas out of. How do I store and transport CO2? CO2 bottles must be stored in an upright position and securely fastened 
to a wall using suitable uh, brackets. It must be transported in an open vehicle, securely fastened. CO2 cylinders should only be transported in a vertical manner, well secured and in an open tray in the back of a utility for example. They should not be transported in the back of a sealed van. Why use high pressure refrigerant? Carbon dioxide systems operate at pressures far higher than we are currently used to with systems. However, it is a natural refrigerant. It has excellent refrigerant properties and it has an ozone depleting potential of zero and a global warming potential of one. Although CO2 has very high working pressures and can cause um, serious injuries, it is an extremely good refrigerant and as it's a natural gas it has a very low GWP of 1 and due to this it's not an environmental risk when used as a refrigerant. A lot of information there guys. Let's summarise the answers from the experts. The hydrocarbon and carbon dioxide gases are different. A lot of the answers to our questions were very similar. However, they are still different gases and we should bear in mind that we still have to treat them differently. Question one asked if we should retrofit either of the gases. The answer was no for both. Existing equipment was not designed for either of these gases. We identify the different gases by looking out for specific labelling. If there is no label, then perhaps treat it like flammable hydrocarbons, but even then, you still need to take every step of caution to ensure your safety. For safety, always ensure you wear plenty of PPE, personal protective equipment. Bearing in mind that hydrocarbons are flammable, cover up with plenty of fire retardant clothing. Carbon dioxide is highly pressurised, so it might be good to add some earplugs to your list of PPE for that one. There is no need to reclaim or recover either gas because both gases are environmentally friendly. Instead, you can choose to safely burn off excess hydrocarbons or release carbon dioxide in well ventilated areas. The key word to storing and transporting either gas revolves around ventilation. Store them safely in well ventilated areas and transport them in open vehicles such as the back of a ute, but never in a closed van. Though using hydrocarbons and carbon dioxide still requires smart OHS procedures, they are still both good refrigerants and friendly to the environment. Pretty cool, hey? I'm Kevin O'Shea. The reason we put this video together is to assist with the safety aspects of using two natural refrigerants, hydrocarbons and carbon dioxide. All refrigerants, whether they be fluorocarbons or natural refrigerants, have their distinct advantages. However, you are likely to come across these two natural refrigerants in the near future. This is not a training video, it is merely an awareness video. You cannot be deemed competent, so to speak, by watching this video. Racker has developed courses that should be available to you at a nearby training organisation. These courses have been developed with great assistance from industry and with financial support from both the Federal and the New South Wales State Governments. Please visit our website for more information www.rackernewsouthwales.asn.au Work safe guys. If you're watching this video as part of a toolbox talk, then why not discuss the following question amongst yourselves. What are some things you will do differently when changing to hydrocarbons or carbon dioxide? Pause the video now to discuss. The message of this film is supported and backed